In this video, we're going to look at asthma in adults. This is an overview, an introduction. Asthma is a common lung disease affecting millions of people. Asthma is caused by narrowing of the airways in the lungs. Asthma can be treated successfully and is also related to other atopic disorders. Here I'm drawing the left and right lung. The trachea bifurcates into the left and right lung. The trachea gives rise to bronchi, which branch into smaller and smaller bronchioles until the alveoli. The normal bronchiole have smooth muscles, which help in narrowing and dilating the lower respiratory tract. The respiratory tract is also covered with mucus which helps in protecting the airways. In asthma, there are three important changes. You have smooth muscle contraction, which narrows the airways, smooth muscle hypertrophy, and mucus hypersecretion, all of which contributes to the narrowing of the airways. These three features results in the signs and symptoms of asthma, which include cough, dyspnea, or shortness of breath, and an expiratory wheeze. People with asthma also may present with recent respiratory tract infections. There are some things you can also see inside the nose. On the nasal concha, you may see nasal polyploids, which can be a sign or a risk factor. The risk factors for asthma include having a family history, a topic history, an allergy, having nasal polyploids, having gourd, and obesity. Investigations for asthma. Gold standard is measuring the peak expiratory flow rate, which is a test that measures how fast a person can exhale, can breathe out, and this tests lung function. There is also the spirometry, which in asthma shows an obstructive pattern. The spirometry will give you an FVV1 over FVC ratio, which is your forced expiratory volume at one second over your forced vital capacity. This ratio is important in diagnosing obstructive diseases, including asthma. A normal inspiration and expiration measurement will have sufficient volume and flow on the graph. In asthma, there is decreased inspiratory volume and expiration shows an obstructive pattern. A FEV1 over FVC ratio of 80% of predicted or less is diagnostic for asthma. Administration of a bronchodilator will improve lung function. When asthma is diagnosed, proper education and management is required. Management includes developing an asthma action plan for patients. Medications include short-acting beta agonists, long-acting beta agonist, LABA, corticosteroids, inhaled, starting with low dose and then moving to higher dose, if severity increases, and then oral corticosteroids can also be used in severe cases. Immunomodulators can be used especially to help patients with allergies and triggers. Education about asthma and use of inhalers are also important. Asthma can be mild, moderate, or severe. Depending on the severity, different management options can be implemented. One way is to develop a management plan for asthma, the STEP approach. In general, asthma can be intermittent or persistent. Intermittent means it comes and goes, such as exercise-induced asthma. Persistent means that it's always there. The STEP approach covers six steps. Step one is for intermittent asthma. For persistent asthma is step two, 
to 6, 6 being the most severe. For intermittent asthma, step 1, short acting beta agonists are used. And this is for quick relief. In general, all patients with asthma should be on a short acting beta agonist for quick relief. Step 2, you can add a low dose inhaled corticosteroid. And this is used as a preventer together with the short acting beta agonist, which is the reliever. If patients cannot handle corticosteroids, other alternatives are available, such as the leukotriene receptor antagonist, Montelukast. Step 3. A long-acting beta agonist can be used together with the low-dose inhaled corticosteroids and the short-acting beta agonist. Step 4. A long-acting beta agonist can be used together with medium-dosed inhaled corticosteroids and short-acting beta agonists. Alternatives to the short-acting beta agonist, the long-acting beta agonist, or the inhaled corticosteroid dose are medications such as nidocromil, the leukotriene receptor antagonist, as I mentioned earlier, and theophylline. These medications, again, can be used as alternatives to the SABA, LABA, and the ICS. For step 5, a long-acting beta agonist can be used together with a high-dose inhaled corticosteroid and short-acting beta agonist. Possibly, an immunomodulator can be added to this step to help with allergic symptoms. Step 6, asthma is severe, and so in addition to all the medications in step 5, an oral corticosteroid is also used.